Hello, Kwe Kwe, Indigenous Crystal. My name is Crystal Desley, and I'm the Indigenous Rights Program Coordinator at Kairos. And I am very happy to welcome everyone to the Kairos online teach-in, Stories of Courage, Women Defending Land and Water in Canada and Brazil. I uh, would like to acknowledge to start off this event and create this sacred space of sharing and acknowledge the land that I'm currently located on, which is my ancestral uh, Omami Winini Aki, the Algonquin Territory located in uh, Eastern Ontario in Canada. Since 2014, Kairos Canada Ecumenical Justice Initiatives has, a, has had a programmatic focus on the gendered impacts of resource extraction in Canada and the Global South. Kairos works in partnership with women, land and water defenders, primarily Indigenous women and organizations to make visible the impacts of resource extraction on women, to draw attention to women's work in the defense of community rights and the environment, and to press for Indigenous women's recognition as key policy stakeholders and decision makers through mechanisms such as free, prior, and informed consent, and as stipulated by the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. And Kairos also advocates for corporate accountability of the Canadian extractive sector operating abroad. Now, I'm very, very excited to be a part of this day today and I'm very happy to see all of you joining us here. And this is actually a continuation. Um, and in November, 2019, Kairos launched the first phase of the Living Digital Hub, which is the Mother Earth and Resource Extracting, Women Defending Land and Water. Uh, so the Mayor Hub brings together original and existing material to support research and advocacy information sharing and movement building on the gendered impacts of resource extraction. The first phase that began in November focused almost exclusively on Latin America. This next phase, which highlights land defense in Canada, will launch this Sunday, June 21st on National Indigenous Peoples Day. To celebrate the launch of Mayor Hub, we are very honored to have with us today four very courageous leaders in the protection of Mother Earth. Alma Brooks is a Woloski grandmother. It was Alma's idea that Kairos take a programmatic focus on the gendered impacts of resource extraction. Uh, we did have um, a Doreen Bernard, a Mi'kmaq grandmother, who was set to join us, but unfortunately, there seems to be a little bit of technical barriers there. So we haven't had Doreen join us thus far, but uh, hopefully in another opportunity. Uh, also joining us is Loretta Williams. Loretta is the chair of the First Nations Women Advocating Responsible Mining. And we also have Evelyn uh, Boniaka. Uh, she is a Kam sorry, Kambiwa woman who specializes on uh, sorry, I just have this here. She's a Kambiwa woman who specializes on gender and race, religious studies, human, indigenous women's rights. Avalyn is the founder of Mina Jera Support Committee for Indigenous Causes, which has a hundred indigenous families in the city and is the first indigenous woman to occupy a position of parliamentary advisor. After being also the first Indigenous woman to run in 2016 in Belo Horizonte, the capital of Minas Gerais, Brazil. And I apologize if I pronounce anything wrong. Um, so today we're moderating, uh, we have a very special person moderating the teach-in today. And this is Sherry Pictou. Sherry is an assistant professor of women's studies at Mount St. Vincent. University and she'll be taking a new position as assistant professor in the departments of law and management at Dalhousie University starting July 1st. So Dr. Pictou is a Mi'kmaq woman from Listajug. Uh, the water cuts through high rocks is how the community is known um, or rather the interpretation of Listajug book and known as Bear River First Nation Nova Scotia. Professor Pictou and Kairos are collaborating on this uh, SSHRC funded project on the gendered impacts of resource extraction 
And again, I'm very honored to introduce Sherry and to welcome you all to this gathering. And thank you all for being here today. Miigwech. Sorry about that. I always have a hard time remembering when to mute and unmute. Well, welcome everybody. I'm uh, really honored to be here and to see that we have uh, uh, a great number of attendees as well. Um, I just wanted to uh, acknowledge that uh, I'm from Mi'kmaq on uh, territory or Wabanaki, uh, our ancestral homelands with our grandmother, Willowstick grandmother, uh, Alma Brooks. And uh, just to kind of acknowledge um, or to ask everybody to acknowledge wherever you are to try to think about the Indigenous people, the ancestral homelands that you're situated on. Uh, just to think about that. And um, because I know we have Loretta from uh, British Columbia and uh, well, what's known today as British Columbia. And so uh, she may want to just uh, say a little bit more for, about her ancestral homelands. So it's interesting to do things like this because usually we would host on our uh, our own ancestral territories, but just try to acknowledge those ancestral territories around the world, including our sister in the south, uh, Evelyn as well. Okay, so the very first question is, um, what brought you, well, there are actually two questions. What brought you to land defense, land or water defense, and what advice would you give to other women protecting land and water. And so we'll start out with uh, Alma, if you want to start out first. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so the first question, I'll try to answer it. I was born a farmer's daughter. And uh, so from a very early age, I, I had a quite a strong connection with the land and the water because uh, the farm that we lived on was on the beautiful Grand Lake and it was a little piece of heaven. Um, it was a, a, a mixed farm. We lived completely off of the farm. My dad was a workaholic and <laughs> he worked from daylight till dark, but we only went to town to buy food or anything uh, twice a year. We would go just before Christmas and uh, then we would go uh, in the spring. He would go in the springs. But other than that, we never went to town or went to store every day. So, you know, I, as I grew older, I began to notice because, you know, in my mother's day, I heard the people talking about being able to drink the water from the Wolustu, the beautiful river. They used to be able to drink the water from the brooks and the lakes. And then I remember when it became unsafe uh, and they could no longer dip their buckets in the water in the river and make their tea because they would get sick. And I remember the old people talking about that. We can't do this anymore because the river is being so polluted. And the other thing that I noticed growing up was the spray. They started to spray DDT everywhere for mosquitoes. But what they did was they started, the, we saw these little um, gold finches while my dad would be cutting the hay, he would, he would come across these little goldfinches just laying there, just fluttering on the ground. Uh, so the poison, they were poisoning, poisoning, you know, everything. And then the foxes would eat the goldfinches and they would become sick. So there was this, uh, I remember, I, I can remember when the, all those things began to happen. And I guess my first active involvement was when we found out that uh, Southwest Energy from the Texas, a, a, a Texas company came here into our territory to, to do fracking. 
And we, we educated ourselves about what that was and the fact that, um, that it caused earthquakes in many other places and that it contaminated the water underground. Uh, so we, we uh, and, and you know, I have to say that it was really the women, the indigenous women who were on the front lines at that time. Um, we blockaded roads, we made our voices heard. We went to sessions where they were promoting this and we made sure that they understood that we did not want them to do that in our territory. We, didn't, we were there to protect the water and we were there to protect the land. And so there were a few years of uh, uh, very, very um, aggressive actions that were taken uh, to try to stop this company. And we, end, we did drive this company out of the territory. They had to go back home. And then the next thing we know, we hear that they want to open up an, an open pit mine up in the very heart of Lustigui territory. And, um, you know, with an open pit mine for tungsten and malignum. And so we had women, particularly women, but there were men too that went to help out to go up into that area. And they started to build a camp. They built a camp right on the ore body. And then they were going to have a big, big, huge tailings pond. They wanted it. This tailings pond was supposed to be the largest anywhere in the world. And so we, we uh, put camps there. And uh, we, so there's still, there's still occupation in that area. And I don't know, we haven't heard anything about, um, you know, about the, where that's going right now, but all we know is that they have not started to uh, the pit open pit mine yet. So, and um, the spraying that's going on in our territory, we we continue to fight against that. New Brunswick is saturated with glyphosate. It's poisoning the land. It's uh, poisoning the water. It's poisoning our medicines. And you know, I mean. Now the earth, we've been speaking for a hundred years. And now this little virus that's come, come uh, is we have to respect, have a great extent of respect for this virus. But, but this is, the elders are saying, this is the earth that's helping herself in the only way that she knows how. And while we're, we're forced to stop and think, was forced to stop, stay home, and think. And that's what we should be doing. Which, what do we want? What path are we going to blaze for the future? And while this, while this little virus has shut us down for a while uh, to slow things down, the earth is actually healing. And some of these little species are, are, are glad because there's, there's a, a little chance for them that they won't be uh, exterminated for good. So, you know, um, this is the earth. And if we don't want to listen to that, then we can look forward to more and maybe even worse than what we see right now. Because uh, the earth is not going to allow herself to be destroyed by the hands of fools. So, so, so Alma, can you just yes. quick, quickly... Uh, maybe provide some advice that you would give to other land protectors? Is my time up? Yes, but can you just quickly, um, can you hear me? Yes, I hear yeah. you now. Can you just quickly um, provide some advice to other women uh, land defenders? Well, I think all of us have an obligation to speak up and to protect the land and, and to make sure that our waters going to have clean drinking water for the future generations. We all have that responsibility in any way that we can possibly uh, do. Any, every little thing is going to count. And one of the things that we're advocating for people is to start to grow your own food. 
uh, start uh, look for heritage seeds look for or, or original seeds that you can save seeds and you can regrow them the next year but uh providing food security is one way and uh finding a uh, uh, a section of ground that you can protect is another thing that can be done. We need to start to eat from our own territory. Okay. Is that enough? Okay. Thank you so much, Elma. We'll all you. And now we'll go to um, we'll go to um, well, what's my order here? Evelyn from Brazil. Puranga Karuka. Eu sou a Avelyn Buniaca Cambioá. Good afternoon, I am Avelyn Buniaca Cambioá. Eu sou da etnia Cambioá. I'm from the, the Cambioá people. E, e o meu povo vem de uma região com muita pouca água. É uma região de Caatinga. And my people come from a very harsh environment. There is little water there. A região de Caatinga é como se fosse uma um sertão, uma savana. The region in front is, is like a desert, like a savanna. It's very dry. No Brasil nós temos mais de 305 povos indígenas. In Brazil we have more than 300 with, uh, indigenous tribes. Entre sul e norte E essa diversidade étnica é muito grande. From north to south, and this diversity in the ethnicity of the people, of the indigenous people, is very large. Em todos os biomas brasileiros, Caatinga, Mata Atlântica, Amazônia, Cerrado. In all environment here in Brazil, Caatinga, Cerrado. Floresta Amazônica. Amazon forest, forest. Nós há 520 anos viemos resistindo a essa colonização, a essa invasão e esse modelo de desenvolvimento que nos fere diretamente enquanto povos indígenas. For more than 500 years we've been surviving uh, these these attacks against the indigenous people of here in Brazil. Nesse momento, a população brasileira indígena que vivem em grandes centros são 38% dos indígenas do Brasil. And now we have 38% of the indigenous people in Brazil living in big cities. Por causa dessa mineração, dessa exploração da mãe terra, dessa devastação e das grandes das grandes fazendas do agronegócio. Because of this devastation, this deforestation that comes from the, the farm business, we indigenous people had to move, had to migrate to big cities. E quando nós fazemos essa migração forçada por causa da mineração, por causa dessas agressões à mãe terra, nós tentamos proteger a mãe terra por outros meios também que não apenas a luta no território tradicional. And because of this mining problem, this forest problem, we have to protect and we have to organize ourselves. Nós então tivemos uma grande migração para o, o sudeste do Brasil, Minas Gerais, Rio de Janeiro, São Paulo. So we had a big migration to the southeast of Brazil, São Paulo, Rio de Janeiro. Minas Gerais. E aqui eu estou em Minas Gerais, um estado em que está sendo completamente devastado pela mineração. And now I live here in Minas Gerais, a Brazilian state that is being that has a big problem with mining. Uma uma das grandes predadoras do estado é uma companhia internacional, uma multinacional chamada Vale one of the biggest predators here in Minas Gerais is an international company called Vale. A Vale, ela minera, é, minério de ferro. 
e devasta as montanhas e águas de Minas. E nós tivemos dois crimes grandes recentemente. The Valley, the Company Valley, devastates with its mining, mining action and also devastates the water or waters. Nós perdemos dois rios. O rio Doce, que era chamado rio Watu, pelo povo Krenak. We lost two rivers. One was a sacred river called Watu. E o rio Paraupeba, que recentemente, por mais um crime da Vale, um rompimento de barragem de rejeitos, que matou muitas pessoas, destruiu o rio e o nosso Yanderecó. And the other river was called Paraupeba. And recently we had a dam disaster that killed our sacred river. E o nosso Yanderecó. And our Yanderecó, it's an indigenous word for good living, for way of living with harmony in nature. Dessa forma, a gente se organizou para manter a vida, o nosso Niandereco, mesmo fora do território tradicional, e lutamos contra a mineração. Entendemos que não existe mineração não predatória. E no atual governo em que nós brasileiras estamos vivendo, o atual presidente ele está autorizando a mineração em terras indígenas. Nós estamos numa luta muito grande e quero agradecer a oportunidade de falar dela aqui. So we are fighting to keep our way of life, our Yandereco, against this actual government here in Brazil that and você tá falando muito, você tem que esse presidente fazer. atual que and, quer legalizar. And this president wants to legalize the deforestation and deforestation here in Brazil. Obrigada. And I would like to thank the, the opportunity to speak here. Thank you. Okay. Um, Evelyn? Sim. Could you take a, just very briefly uh, provide make a statement maybe what advice would you give to other land women land defenders based on her struggles in brazil this is a huge struggle that they're fighting to protect their water what kind of advice or guidance would she give to other women who are also struggling in other parts of the world to protect their water and land Sim. Primeiro, autoproteção. Nós precisamos nos proteger. First, self-protection. We need to protect ourselves. Precisamos nos alimentar, dormir, tentar o máximo manter a saúde mental e emocional. We need to keep yourselves healthy. We need to eat well, we need to sleep well, keep your mental health, or body health. E manter a nossa conexão espiritual com a Mãe Terra. And keep our spiritual connection with Mother Earth. Porque essa luta são contra poderes muito maiores do que nós. Because this fight is against a force that is bigger than us alone. Com muito mais dinheiro, recurso. With much more money, resources. E muita raiva que eles têm de tudo que é vivo e tudo que a Mãe Terra nos deu e criou. And a lot of anger that they have against all that is living, all that Mother Earth gave us. Então precisamos okay. estar fortes, nos curarmos, para ajudarmos a curar outras mulheres que continuamos nos curando junto com a Mãe Terra. So we need to keep strong to heal ourselves in order to heal another woman to help us heal together. Okay, thank you so much, Evelyn.
Okay, so now we'll go to the West Coast uh, to Loretta. And Loretta, we didn't have a chance to uh, talk earlier, but uh, I'm so honored to meet you and welcome you here. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the invite. Um, thank you for the two stories that we've heard. Um, you know, we hear the story. I've heard the story all over the world on fights like this. But again, my name is Loretta Williams. I'm from the Tzaiskotin Nation. Um, I'm Hanikotin, which is one of six Chilcotin communities. And um, our land is very pristine. We are in the headwaters of the um, Fraser River. And so we protect the water very much. It's, it's, um, we're in the snow-capped mountains and the backdrop of the coast mountains. And um, very clean water. So we can drink out of our streams, we can drink out of our rivers, and um, we'll always protect that. And that's something I've learned from my grandparents um, since at a very early age. You know, you protect what um, you protect what you need, and you know, you protect your water, you protect your your wildlife because they will look after you. So I've grown up with that. You know, you only take what you need. You don't take too much. Um, and so our our battle has been going since 1864. Um, we had um, Chalcotin War that happened in our territory, and um, it was our it was our people that were. Um, I guess there was a, there was a road construction crew coming through, and it was because of the gold rush um, back then. And um, our people worked with them at first, and until until the road construction crew started. Um, disrespecting our women. Um, you know, they started, they started um, kidnapping them and bringing them, bringing them away from their families. And so um, at that point, our people really started protecting the land and they, they, they wiped that crew out actually because, um, because of that. And that road hasn't been built since. So at a very early um, year, we were protecting the land and, and that, that hurt still comes down to me yet. So I continue to protect the land just as hard as they did. And it, that's very important to me. And that's the reason why um, I'm with First Nations women advocating for responsible mining is because um, I speak out against these, these mining companies that are in our areas and I help other women, especially um, that are in British Columbia that are having the same problem and who have the lack of resources. Um, for me, it's been 15 years that I've been defending my land um, against a mining company that wanted to build an open pit gold and copper mine. And um, like I said, you know, we wanted to protect our waters and they would have impacted our waters and we, we protect our waters because of our returning spawning salmon every year. And so, um, we have a lot of things happening here in, um, in British Columbia, Canada, and um, especially in British Columbia, we have um, in November 2019, BC signed on to um, UNDRIP. And so that's, you know, that's the United Nations Declaration of Indigenous, um, sorry, Rights of Indigenous People. And that, ha that will recognize and protect the human rights of Indigenous people. So, um, and this is a part of reconciliation. And um, BC will now line up their, their laws to, to, I guess, harmonize with UNDRIP. So we're in the process of doing that right now and we'll make sure that they do that. We'll hold them accountable um, to their word because they promised, um, they've made promises to all indigenous peoples. Um, but we are still struggling, you know, that's a good story there, but we're still struggling because of the projects that were um, started before November 2019. And so, um, like I said, we're battling against Tosico, but we recently got some good news that um, Canada has told them to go away. So now we can finally celebrate that win. Um, we, have, we have successfully um, guarded our lands. Um, and plus like there's other um, things that have happened here. We had Mount Polly, which is a, um, a um, 
a mine waste um, tailings pond that has has um, it had broken, which is which was five or five and a half years, <laughs> sorry, which um, five and a half years we're still battling to get um, recognition of that and and hold somebody accountable. Everyone has just walked away. Um, so our resistance is still strong and. Um, the advice that I want to give to other land defenders is um, to keep up the resistance. Um, your future gen generations depend on it very much. Um, holding up the fight and um, just hold up the fight, keep going. And you know, like we are here in solidarity. Um, while you're, when you protect your land and we, our connection to that land like is very important because of the language that comes with that land that culture and um, everything that comes with that land is very important to keep in in connection with your people occupy your land go out there and make your make your presence known out there build cabins um, hold gatherings and just have your people out there on the land sing your songs songs are very important songs are very important to me I'm a, I'm a drummer myself. And so that's what I want to say. And my last message is that we're always here in solidarity. Thank you so much, Loretta. Um, You're very welcome. Yes, there's a lot, there's a lot going out in British Columbia right now and, and we're keeping an eye on and, and, and thank you for that. Well, now we're going to turn uh, to our second question, our second round, and we'll begin with Elma again. And the second question is, um, and you partially answered some of this, Alma, um, what brought, oh, sorry, uh, what actions would you like to see from those not directly defending land and water? What would you like to see from those that, who are not directly involved in the fight? Well, I think, you know, um, this is a worldwide issue and you hear from indigenous people very very similar stories all over the world and i would have to say you know the earth needs us right now the earth needs us as much as we need her uh but i th i would say it's very important to practice our way of life continue to practice our way of life uh grow our own food Food sovereignty, bring bring that back. Uh, um, food securities. Uh, uh, practice the ceremonies of your culture and your people. Um, you know, follow the original instructions. And if you don't know what they are, find out what they are. Uh, I, I believe that um, all peoples had and were given um, in original instructions at the beginning of time and we're told that when the when the earth was peopled and the people were placed at the four corners of the earth that each peoples were given a bundle a path to walk on and a bundle uh, with everything that they needed in order to live a good and happy life right here on this earth so I think that we need to search for those paths. We need to pick up those bundles and we need to practice those ways and our ways of life. And from there, people will, will um, begin to reconnect spiritually to the earth and to all other living things, our relatives. See what Alabama, that's, that's what we say when we go into our ceremonies. We acknowledge all of our relations in the natural world. It's them, Sue. Okay, thank you so much, Alma. And so we'll go back to Evelyn. And um, I'll repeat the question. And Evelyn, do we see you? Yes? Okay. And Levi, okay, fantastic. Um, so the question is like, what actions would you like to see from those who are not um, directly protecting land and water? They're not defending that. What actions would you like to see from others? I created a voice that made for myself. 
it. The first one is information. As pessoas precisam saber ao redor do mundo o que está acontecendo com as fontes de água, com a comida que elas comem. The people around the world needs to know what happens about their food, about the water they take. Ah, desculpe, estava desligado o microfone. É, então, a, a saber que essa, essa água vem de uma ponte, ela não é comprada em um supermercado. É importante saber que essa água vem de um recurso. Não é uma bota e uma bota. E existem pessoas que vivem diretamente dessa relação com a Mãe Terra. Estão produzindo alimento, cuidando das nascentes. E há pessoas que vivem diretamente dessas recursos. E o racismo ambiental nos atinge diretamente. Então as terras que são devastadas atingem o povo indígena, mas também atinge o mundo inteiro. E esse environmental racismo é related to everyone, não apenas to the indígenas. people. It affects e essa luta, everyone. E essa luta pela Mãe Terra é a luta de todos. Esse processo de conscientização através das mídias, das redes sociais, das manifestações, das nossas entradas em políticas para fazer projetos de lei que protejam a Mãe Terra e aos seus povos. E esse fight for the Mother Earth é para everyone. We need to use all the tools that we have in hands, like the social media and fight for the civil council. Every every place we could fight, we need to fight. Lutar, inclusive. É, nos parlamentos, para que haja presença dos povos originários. E nós precisamos lutar, mesmo no nosso congresso. Então, nós precisamos ser representados para os povos indígenas. Para que a gente possa garantir, so that we can guarantee, de um, dentro de uma constituição feita por brancos, inside a constituição feita por white people e por white people que os povos da terra têm o direito that the people from mother earth have the right e que a mãe terra tem o direito and even mother earth has rights se essa for uma luta de todo if this one is a fight that everybody fights vai ser um despertar it is going to be an awakening Esse, eu faço o convite para um despertamento So I make, I make this invitation for an awakening. Através da nossa força ancestral. Through our ancestral force. Dos nossos rituais sagrados. Our sacred rituals. E da nossa missão. And our mission. Como a avó Alma falou. As grandmother Alma talked. Talk Temos os recursos para vivermos em nossa terra. We have the resources to live here on earth. Mas estamos sendo atacados fortemente. But we are being strongly attacked. E vamos ter que sensibilizar as And outras pessoas que não se sentem conectados. When you're going to have to sensitize other people that don't feel connected. Para que se juntem a nós nessa luta. So they come together with us in this fight. Sabendo que se a água acaba para os povos indígenas. Being known that if the water runs out for the indigenous people. Acaba para o resto do mundo. It runs out for all the world. Nós no Brasil. We here in Brazil. Temos a maior população indígena do mundo. We have the biggest indigenous people in the world. E somos os maiores guardiões And we are the da floresta of the forest. e de toda a Mãe Terra. And of all Mother Earth. Estamos sofrendo diretamente we are suffering directly com o atual governo. 
with the actual Brazilian government. Que tem that has financiado paid o desmatamento the deforestation que é o maior causa that is the biggest cause de aquecimento global of global warming e também tem autorizado and also has authorized mineração em larga escala mining in the biggest scale dentro de territórios tradicionais indígenas precisamos indigenous territories so we need precisamos tocar so we need to touch toda a sociedade all society para que se sinta parte so it feels part responsável nessa luta responsável e também atingida diretamente and also directly involved por toda essa destruição with all this destruction coacaturete coacaturete thank you okay thank you so much uh thank you uh evelyn and uh thank you leave for that translation and so now we'll go to uh loretta there she is and so loretta what actions would you like to see from those not directly defending land and water. You were saying that you spent 15 years doing this. You've had some good news. What would you want to see further actions from others who are not directly involved in protecting land and water? Are we talking like more like government? I, I forgot to ask the question earlier. Or are <laughs> we talking about, are we talking about maybe some possible brothers and sisters that'll come help us? I would above. say a little bit of both. Whatever your heart heart uh, feels there. Okay, so I'm going to start with um, just probably just educating oneself is very important of all the projects that are happening. Um, be aware that this is um, happening everywhere. Um, find ways to help. Attending attending events, um, connecting with Indigenous people um if you want to help and then advocates are very important for us um, we've had a lot of people advocate for us advocate for us and that has helped a lot over the years um donate resources because um, all of our communities start out with nothing basically just our own people and our own stories so it's very important that um you know if people can donate their time to help us or whether it be through expertise or even money. Money is very important because on the ground, you know, we're always looking for some dollars to get from A to B, whether it be to meetings or out to the land and whatnot. Um, visit um, communities that are being impacted. Um, visit the land that's being impacted. And I know from a lot of our people that have been assisting us, um, just by visiting us and hearing our stories and going to the land, um, they were awakened and so, that assisted us. And also when I mentioned reconciliation earlier, I didn't mention that um, we are going, we've won a court case and we have title over our land. And so right now we are in um, negotiations with British Columbia and Canada. So reconciliation is a very important word to us, um, along with re restoration and um, justice and compensation, because all of the, all of those things we are, we are demanding from the government right now. So we're sitting at the table with the government and they know what's, what, what impacts um, that we've had so far, whether it be through um, mining or whether it be through um, just settlement in our lands and um, also logging. Logging has been very impactful to our lands as well. So to the government, um, you know, it's, it's very important that they hear our stories and that they listen with their hearts because, um, and they also be receptive of our needs. So that's what reconciliation means to me. So I'll leave it at that, I think. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Loretta. Those, uh, that's a lot to fit in there to do the government and the potential advocates and allies. Thank you so much. And I think people uh, tend to forget that, that uh, not only are people, women, particularly women out there,
de defended the land and water on one front, and they're also trying to navigate through government on the other. And I think that's what I've been hearing uh, from all three of you. So with that, we're going to take uh, a few moments here, about maybe 20 minutes of uh, some questions uh, to the panelists. Okay, we have one here already from uh, Jim. And basically he's asking, how would you recommend Lincoln women land defenders and food sovereignty to those living in urban areas in Canada? That's very interesting. Um, how would you recommend Lincoln women land defenders and food sovereignty to those living in urban areas in Canada? Alma, do you want to start trying to answer that? Do you want to try? I'll try, yeah, I'll try. Well, what's going on here uh, in Fredericton, where we live, it's a city, uh, and some of our the folks, we have the Native Women's Association of Canada has a program now and it's called uh, Women in Agriculture, Indigenous Women in Agriculture. And um, we're helping people to educate people about how to build soil and how to start to grow food in their backyard. And uh, there has been a very, um, you know, a lot of women signed up for it. And uh, in fact, we tried to find heritage seeds early uh, in May, and everybody must have the same idea because we couldn't f had none. They were sold out. These companies that have these seeds, they were sold out or they were backed up, and you you'd have to wait six months to get your seeds. So it's good to uh, like we're we did start their gardens though. Um, and we're having another session on with our gardeners, all from different parts, uh, from the communities in the province here in New Brunswick. And we're trying to um, teach them how to build a soil so that the, so the food that they grow will have some nutritional value. And uh, what we're finding is that because of so much leaching that has been done over the years by farmers and use of of um, chemicals and pesticides and, and herbicides and all kinds of poison that the earth has become addicted. And so they have to use more and more and more in order to yield the same amount or more in their crops. So what we're trying to do is find the natural ways. How did our people, our people on the river here, we were not farmers, but we grew food. We grew medicines that was brought it and planted it close to the village on the river. There were various different traditional villages along the river. And in our research, we found also that, uh, that um, this whole term, you hear ter people calling it now permaculture, permaculture. Uh, and in the research, we found that Europeans went all over the world and they looked at the best practices from indigenous people and they copied those and packaged it and called it permaculture. And they came back and they said, look what we did. Look what we have. But they forgot to give any credibility or credit to the indigenous people from which they took the knowledge. So we want to bring that back. We want to bring it back, and we have managed to access a 125-acre beautiful piece of ground uh, that has never had any chemicals on it. It has 100, 100 acres of woodlot, which is where a lot of our medicines are, and what we want to do is bring back all of the kinds of food that we know of that are natural and native of this territory and bring it to that place and plant it there so that we can protect it. And it, there'll be always a, a supply of food and medicine. So Elma, yeah. how would people in Fredericton connect with that? 
Pardon me? How would people in Fredericton connect that? That's living downtown Fredericton or down? Well, it, the place is within a, uh, you can drive there in uh, half an hour. Okay. The place, from Fredericton. But so then again, so I'm in other, other uh, urban areas. They can come and have, come there and learn how to do this and then take it back and start growing things in their own yard. Okay, thank you. Okay, and Loretta, any advice on how would you recommend Lincoln women land defenders and food sovereignty to those living in urban areas in Canada? I was just thinking the same thing. I was looking out the window, like, because I have a lot of First Nations neighbors and trying to think like, okay, how would I, how would I go about reaching out to them? And I think a lot of people are on Facebook, you know, you reach out through Facebook um, and, um, and put that idea out there. Education is important, right? We all, and a lot of our women do want to get back to the land. They want to be able to like plant their own garden and stuff. Like I want to plant my own garden. I live in a city. And so I think just reach, finding ways to reach out to them, whether it be through the friendship centers or even through school programs. Um, a lot of the students um, would like to see, see that some of that like within their own programming at, in schools, First Nations especially. Um, Facebook is always a way, you know, social media is always important. So I think I'll leave it at that. That one's a difficult, that one's a really difficult question. I'm gonna think about that one more. Yeah, it, it, it is. I, I do know that uh, just from our experience in uh, Halifax and with the struggle that Doreen would have probably talked about uh, the struggle against Alton Gas, that community is probably about 45 minutes an hour outside mm -hmm. and where that struggle is going on. And it is a matter of through Facebook and a lot of awareness and so forth. And I know even at one point they had buses going out there that if anybody wanted to go out and, and join the struggle and, and so forth. But thank you very much for that. I know this was directed to Canada, but I wanted to also ask Evelyn uh, if she could contribute here because in her story, they were basically forced to migrate to the city. Mm. And so Evelyn, um, I would like to extend this question. How would you, you know, you talked about deforestation, you talked about mining. How would you recommend Lincoln women who are struggling uh, in that to other people living in the urban area or the city areas? Bem, como eu disse antes, 38% da população brasileira está nos grandes centros, da população indígena brasileira está nos grandes centros urbanos. As I said before, 38% of the indigenous population here in Brazil is in the big cities. Nós temos uma luta fundiária muito antiga. We have a land fight very, very old. E o que nós fazemos na cidade para sobreviver And what we do in the city in order to survive é manter a nossa tradição is to keep our tradition viva alive. Não temos território físico. We don't have physical land, physical territory. Porque as pessoas migram da floresta because the people migrate from the forest das suas aldeias from their tribes para as periferias da cidade to the outskirts of the city casas muito pequenas very small houses em comunidades muito pobres in very poor poor, poor communities com pouca terra with quase small, nada with almost no space uma casa em cima da outra. A house above another. E é quase impossível. So it's almost impossible. Cultivar para sobrevivência. To plant for survival. Então a nossa alimentação depende toda. So our nutrition depends on. Das compras feitas no mercado. 
depends from the food we buy in the market. Por causa disso, because of this, nós fomos atrás de ocupar novas terras. We tried to occupy new land. E quando fomos a esse território, and à beira do rio Paraupeba, and when we came to this land near river Paraupeba, começamos a construir uma start, aldeia indígena. We started to build a new indigenous tribe, formada por pe por pessoas indígenas, made by indigenous people, que saíram do território tradicional e viviam nessas favelas na cidade. That came from their original territory and came to live in these city slums, city outskirts. E nesse território, and in this territory, começamos a cultivar e a retomar o, o a ligação com a terra. We started to plant and retake our connection with our land. Dois anos depois, two years after, a Vale, the company Vale, cometeu o crime, committed a crime, com o rompimento da barragem do feijão, with the dam breakage, que destruiu todo o rio, that destroyed the entire river, e tudo que já havíamos começado a construir, and everything we started to build. Muitas pessoas retornaram à cidade. A lot of these people returned to the city. E continuamos a luta. And kept the fight. Para conseguir um pedaço de território para que possamos reconstruir a nossa vida. To get a new piece of land so we can rebuild our lives. Okay. So, in the interest of time, I thank you, Evelyn. Um, you really opened up our eyes to the displacement, the displacement from your ancestral homelands and even the struggle to start over, and thank you for that. Uh, we have only about 10 minutes left, and I'm going to combine a couple of questions here that I think are interrelated. Um, one is from Matt. Uh, we heard how important education is to bring in people to the fight. And how and where should education begin? And Evelyn, that's, uh, and hopefully the two of these can be answered because we're talking about alliances. Um, she would like to know uh, your opinion about potential alliances with feminist and ecologist non-indigenous organizations and movements have have you made connections with those type of allies and i know loretta said we do have a lot of advocates and and, and it's not always easy but i'm going to try to lump those in like uh where should education begin i think we heard some of that in in the previous uh questions where should education begin? And what about the potential alliances to help with that, particularly if there are other feminist and ecologist non-Indigenous organizations? Anybody want to take that on? Well, okay. So over the last 15 years, I guess, um, when I first started in 2005, um, just getting the education out, like having just having, we were having meetings like in every town and handing out flyers and um, just educating people about, about our fight and hoping to get people on our side. And, you know, we had a lot of people that, that came in that were against what we were doing, but that didn't stop us. We just kept going. And, you know, like we'd go to meetings in Vancouver, we'd hold rallies. Um, and during those rallies, we would invite people to come have like tea and bannock with us in the evening where, where our, our leaders could go and speak about um, our fight, right? And they'd also speak about our title case as well and, and you know, just share stories and, and tears because a lot of this is pretty hard on people. 
you know, like I've had a couple of burnouts over the couple of years or over the 15 years. And, and it's, you know, it's very important that we look after ourselves, like, um, like Evelyn said, and um, I guess just going out and advocating for, for what you're fighting for, it doesn't matter how, um, you know, you can advocate because I have like a page on Facebook, FN Worm, and um, we put out a lot of information there. And I also use my own page because I have about 2000 friends. And so any way, any way possible, whether it be through newspapers, um, we had like ladies that had like reading groups, I'd go to reading groups and, and um, talk about my problem or my, um, our, our impacts like to our land and just any way possible. You know, you got to think outside the box. Don't stay in that little box that everybody puts you in. Think outside the box because there's a lot of important ways that you can get information out now, nowadays, compared to back then. Um, a lot of the stuff had to go out like um, via just letters and stuff. So it's getting, it's getting easier these days. But um, we've got a lot of people on side, which I'm very grateful for, and they still work with us a lot. And so, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Okay, thank you, Loretta. Alma, where should education start? Un unmute yourself and what okay. about potential allies? <laughs> yes, no, I agree with everything that Loretta said. And also, uh, we, you know, I think there, we should start having some uh, seminars that are indigenous led and uh, conferences and lectures and uh, every opportunity that we can make uh, to educate the public. I noticed that a lot of times when we invite them to come to spiritual ceremonies, they learn and it's a life-changing experience for them. Many, many, many times, many people. So I think that's so very important that we do that. They have to begin to have a relationship with the world around them different than what they've had in the past because they're headed for a brick wall. They're the very same forces that are hurting us are the same forces that are hurting the earth. And so we have to, they don't see it. I don't think they see it. So it's up to us. And I was told a long time ago by actually by survivors of the residential schools when I went to listen to them at some of their healing sessions and they said you know they were told you our people are going people are going to come to us to show them how to walk on this earth and some of the elders just put their hands up in the air like that and said oh my god and it was so overwhelming for them <laughs> but i believe that that's true i think that that's the way it's going to be okay thank you yeah, we hold the key survival of life on this planet thank you so much all right okay. evelyn uh where should education start for having people to help Bom, us? eu sou professora também aqui em Minas Gerais em Brasil em Minas Gerais e eu acredito que a educação precisa começar da escola da educação escolar And I believe this education should begin in school education. Desde a primeira formação. Since from the first formation. É preciso haver um conhecimento da nossa história real. It is needed that we should know our real, our real history. Nos países que nós, né, nós sofremos a colonização, nós povos originários, resistentes. In countries where we suffered the colonization, we, the indigenous people, temos a história contada pelo ponto de vista do conquistador. We have the history told by the point of view of the conqueror. Então, fazer esse trabalho de educação. So to do this education work. Precisa começar de pequenininho. We need to start from the beginning, from very small, from with the little. Da criança. Since the child. Até a, a todas as suas fases de educação formal. Until all the phases of formal education. E também na educação informal. 
and also informal education. Como a guerreira Alma trouxe? Like Alma brought to us. Que é conviver conosco. That is living with us. Participar dos rituais. To participate of the rituals. Aprender a respeito de nós. To learn about us. Eles não sabem nada sobre os povos indígenas. They don't know nothing about the indigenous people. Não é ensinado nas escolas. It isn't taught in the schools. Nem nas universidades. Even in the universities. Nós estamos com uma função. We, we are like a function. De resgate da mãe terra. Of Mother Earth's rescue. E também preparar outros. And also to prepare others para esse despertamento. To this awakening. Então, eu acredito que a educação formal so ela é fundamental ferramenta. So I believe that formal education is a fundamental tool. Para que a gente mude e traga possibilidades para uma nova geração. So that we can change and bring new opportunities to this generation que tenha conhecimento that has the knowledge da real história do, dos povos originários of the real history of original people e da sua própria real história também and of its own real history no Brasil in Brazil nós temos a lei 11.645 we have the law 11.611.000. Que obriga that obliges o ensino da cultura indígena e afro-brasileira the teaching of the indigenous culture and afro afro-brazilian culture nas escolas públicas e privadas in public and private schools mas não é cumprido but it isn't followed. Nós indígenas, we the indigenous people, nos organizamos, organized ourselves, e fazemos essa educação racial. And make this racial education. Um letramento racial. A racial school. Can, can I ask one more question that we might be able to get in because this directly pertains to Evelyn? It was from Judith, and it says, you talked of two dam disasters in Brazil. I cannot pronounce these names. Uh, Marina Brumadino, I'm probably not pronouncing that, but there was these two dam disasters. And I don't know what context this is in, but is Vale recognizing the rights of those who are affected by those disasters? Has there ever been any compensation to women who lost their land, water, or their homes? If you could answer that just briefly, because we're kind of running out of time here. Sim. Yes. Sim. Os dois crimes da, da Vale do Rio Doce. These are two crimes of the company Vale. Foram em dois anos apenas, entre um e outro. There has been only two years separating one from another. A empresa começou com negociações de pagamento de indenizações. The company started with compensations, money compensations. Muito baixas. Very low, very low. E não apresentaram nenhum and, plano para recuperação do rio. And they didn't show any plan to the recovery of the river. Eles pagam mensalmente o equivalente a um salário mínimo brasileiro. They pay monthly the minimum wage, the equivalent to, of the minimum wage here in Brazil to the families. Reais. Around thousand dollars, thousand reais por mês. Monthly. O que não é suficiente para manter a vida e, e as famílias têm que voltar para a cidade. And it isn't enough to maintain, the, to keep the families alive. So they have to come to the city. Okay. Permanecemos na luta 
junto ao Ministério Público Federal. We keep our fights here uh, alongside the government, along the public ministry here. Okay. Lutando por uma recuperação do rio. Fighting for the river recovery. E uma realocação para as famílias diretamente atingidas, porque não podemos mais nadar no rio, pescar e nada, nenhum ritual dentro do rio, nada mais. And also a land reallocation of the families directly involved in the disaster. So these people can't have their water, can't have their rituals, can't have their food. Nem realizar os rituais. Okay, and thank they... you so much. Thank you so much. I, and I apologize for cutting you off, but I know we're sort of running out of time. And um, I'll try to okay. maybe, uh, speak to... Um, there's, well, there was one more here, and it's really interesting. Uh, because because Loretta, you talked about reconciliation, uh, but I'll try to maybe sum up on that um, when when we uh, sum up. And if you don't mind, uh, what I'm going to say, I want to reiterate that this is going to this is being recorded. This will be available. This teaching. I thank everybody for participating. It's such an honor, and. Um, you always learn the differences, but you also uh, learn the commonalities as well. And um, if the panelists don't mind, if there's somebody that had an outstanding question that did not get answered, uh, you can get a hold of Kairos, or and maybe they can contact one of the panelists, or you may, um, or if the panelists may want to offer their emails as well. So I would like to, um, to extend that invitation to even learn more. And I'm just gonna sum up, take a couple of minutes to try to sum up here. Basically, what I've heard that was common throughout um, Turtle Island, uh, north, south, is that there seems to be two perspectives when it comes to Mother Earth two perspectives about indigenous peoples. And one is from, and I, and I classify this in one because we're hearing where the government often is working with corporations, even though the government is supposed to be protecting indigenous people and their lands, that they are working with corporations to exploit those very lands. So there's a contradiction there. And most of places it's like um, the government is advocating for the company while regulating. And secondly, is that there's been, a, and this probably relates to Frederico's um, question a bit, because he was asking about the importance of policies that aim to value the memories of the violence even that's been taken against indigenous people as well as those policies for reparations for those violence. Well, it's been very, very difficult and particularly for indigenous women. And I'll speak for a second here to Canada, uh, in, in Canada is that um, there is a disrespect for indigenous women's bodies. This has always been the case. The, the indigenous bodies, uh, women's bodies particularly, has been um, regarded as property. And um, so, so this runs, how can I say, this is a contradiction to indigenous thought. Because what I've heard from all our three panelists is that indigenous lives is connected to the land and water. And water is medicine. And if you look at it, how long can you live without water? And this is what is so fundamentally important when we're going up against these corporations. Secondly, that we are so intricately interconnected. You heard Elma talk about all of our relations. All of our relations, I know in, in Mi'kma'ki and in Elma, and, and, and uh, I've also heard this uh, in Loretta's, talk as well is all of life 
they are all our relations and should be um, treated as such. I also heard very valuable um, teaching from Evelyn, and I know Loretta uh, relates to this. I know Alma can, because we all burn out, is how do we self-protect ourselves? How do we self-heal ourselves? Because we cannot just burn ourselves out as Indigenous women, and that was a really important lesson. And some of that was some of those teachings, as you've heard, that we're hoping that the rest of you can take lessons from is reconnecting to the land and water, reconnecting to our ceremonies. These ceremonies are not just for show, they are, they are about all of our relations. Um, yeah, to call on all of our relatives. I also heard throughout the fundamental importance the how food and water is very important. And I think this is something that we've learned, especially during this time with COVID, that we have to assert food sovereignty. Rather that's hunting, fishing, or as Alma they're doing is they're, they're growing their own food. And I know that's difficult for the urban areas, but I would also encourage people living in urban areas to think about that. So I'm, I've got to just sum up here because we only got about uh, one minute. I will just end with that uh, environmental issues are related to everybody. Take the invitations of our panelists to visit the land, visit Indigenous people, and uh, just visit. And, um, and you'll learn so much that way, and you are welcome. I think we've been taught to think that we have to be separate and we don't. We welcome you into our ancestral homelands. And so I'll just end it with that. And I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do after this, Gabriella, or, oh, there we have. We have Cheryl. Yeah, um, oh, Crystal, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. So just in closing, um, a quick moment to bring us all back together. And on behalf of Kairos, Thank you to everyone. I would especially like to thank uh, our panelists, Alma Brooks, Loretta Williams, Evelyn Bonacca, and of course, uh, unfortunately, Doreen Bernard who couldn't join us, and especially for Sherry Pictou for moderating. I'd also like to thank our interpreters, Rebecca Guimeres, Firmo Pompo, Paulina Baez, and Levi Kekatu and Daniela Campolina for helping coordinate today. Um, please keep an eye out on the Kairos website. The recordings from today's uh, teaching will be available there in the very, very briefly in the next few days. And remember that Kairos is launching the Canadian content of Mare Hub this Sunday. So follow Mare Hub on social media. It's on Instagram, it's on Facebook, and the website is spectacular, so please uh, take some time uh, this week, this weekend, check out the website and see what's happening. And once more, miigwech to all of you, Marci, Valalyn, thank you for joining us today and uh, be well. <laughs>